Good evening, everyone. I'm Neeti Petkari Wala, and I'm serving as the current president of the Economic Society (SRCC). I hope that you guys are settling in well, and I'm really glad to see all of you here. So, without further ado, we'll get started with the orientation. Before diving in into the presentation and introducing you to the multitude of initiatives that we undertake, I would like to give you a sort of bird's eye view of the society and talk a little about who we are and what we stand for at a very core. Our vision is simple: we aspire to be a student-run think tank, and a cursory glance at our project would make would make it very clear that perfection. quality and impact are some of the things that we take very seriously at the economic society srcc ecosoc is an ambitious empowering and democratic society and we are devoted to learning in all its forms the ones that stem from researching the ones that are a product of impassioned debates and discussions taking place over whatsapp groups chai pe charcha and networking and last the ones that are a consequence of us passing on our own limited knowledge to others we have a legacy of more than 50 years a legacy that was achieved by consistently deliver delivering results that are almost unheard of at an undergraduate level we strive to make a positive impact on the world and this compels us to do to be bigger do better and think bolder and while we will be quantifying the same shortly i would like to Start with a few other things. Ecosoc deals with literally everything under the sun because when your prime domains are economics and policy, almost by construction you end up covering anything. As a society, we ensure that our juniors take the lead and that we as seniors act as facilitators and guides to ensure that your ideas strike fruition. And in this respect, I can personally assure you that if there's something you want to do and if we can do it. as is more often the case than not then we will do it next slide please nikush right so as you can see on your screen we were established in the 1970s making us one of the oldest and the most prestigious societies of not only the college but also the country you'll quickly realize that we talk a lot about impact at the economic society but we recognize that the biggest impact is the one we have on each other as comrades in arms as members of the same team as juniors and seniors working in close contact and thus from the very beginning we want to emphasize the importance we put on our members and their development quite simply the people make the society and in this sense ecosoc is truly a congregation of some of the most curious considerate and hard working people that you'll ever come across this this brings me to another point that truly separates us unlike most societies in this college we are a wingless organization the idea behind this is simple we do not believe in clipping your wings by restricting you to a single department in this sense we very categorically reject the idea of putting you in boxes and taming your creativity we realize that you would be devoting a lot of your time to the society and in return you deserve nothing less than a holistic experience that would redefine your perspective and allow you to discover new ideas the wingless nature of ecosoc is what makes it a truly dynamic environment you will find that you're doing it all one day you could be working on a research paper the next day you'll be hosting people who had earlier only seen on television and not so long after that you'll be organizing press on a behemoth scale negotiating with corporates handling databases drawing up budgets while at the same time editing articles from the best and the brightest of the country next slide please Moving on to the Sriram Economic Summit, SRUS is our flagship economic summit that we organize every year with the primary aim of stimulating discourse and engaging students from across the country. Last year, SRUS was able to connect 15,000 students from a wide range of prestigious institutions. Additionally, we received personal video messages from Professor Gregory Mankiv. A lot of you must know him because he is the author of a lot of, of your first time textbooks and Professor Paul Milgram. who is the 2020 nobel laureate in economics it was a truly proud moment for the college to receive such global praise and support as you can see on the screen we've had the privilege of interview interviewing leading personalities like mr rakesh chunjinwala global ceos of deloitte world bank and union ministers 
next year, hopefully offline, you guys would be the ones posting such personalities, thereby getting a unique opportunity to engage in high level discussions with leaders of the industry. Next slide, Nikunj. Um, under SRES, we have, we have five primary flagship events. The first one being Shira Macromania, which is an amalgamation of trade simulations, case studies, and data analytics, uh, trying to simulate a very real macroeconomic experience. The World Bank has been a partner for this event for the past few years. Sriram Vyapar is the most intriguing business simulation event that offers participants the chance to build their own company, get engaged in a lot of trading in mergers and acquisitions and whatnot. Sriram Case Conundrum is the flagship case, a case competition of SRS, which mixes the vigor of case strategy with data. Last year, we had Kepler and Canon and Sarpa Consulting as partners for the same. Shiram Conconomics is a perfect blend of policy analysis, data interpretation, and concrete solution drafting. And Shiram EDLV is probably one of the most interesting and exciting events that we have at SRS because every year it has a surprise element. In 2019, for example, we had a treasure hunt across Delhi organized for the participants so that they could get a practical side of economics and policy. And that pushes them to think out of the box. You can see from this slide that we have a wide ranging set of events that are not limited to just the domain of economics. We have finance, we have business, we have current affairs and whatnot. Handling an event as big as SRES would definitely be one of your highlights of your first years. Personally, from my experience, you'll be left with a handful of experiences, skills and rules. You'll get very comfortable connecting with high level executives, government officials, vendors, co-workers. Of course, all of it, um, depending on whether offline or online, you'll be uh, getting to uh, serve a lot of people and attendees as well. Genuine passion for your events, for whatever initiative that you're undertaking would help you overcome all the bumps in the road. It can also lead to bursts of creativity and inspiration to create something great instead of just trying to get through the event. Uh, next up, we have the research and policy directors who will be dissecting into the research publication and the research initiatives to society. All right. So ECOSOC produces a very wide range of research publications in the form of reports and briefs. We choose very niche topics that haven't been explored too widely before, and we try to ensure that the research we put out incorporates unique perspectives and research frameworks or takes up a different qualitative or quantitative approach than the existing subject matter on that topic. We always ensure that our reports are 100% credible and take up multiple rounds of fact checking and plagiarism checks, which are both very important things to learn if you want to be a good researcher. It's an extremely enriching experience to go from the ideation stage to the research stage, to the drafting stage, all the way to the designing of the report. And everyone is involved in all stages of this process. So it's a, so it's a very holistic learning experience. Now talking about a few of the reports that we have authored recently, We've authored a report on residual colonialism, which talks about how the impact of British rule still manifests, manifests itself in multiple ways across not only the socioeconomic and political systems, but also things like climate change, laws, education, transport, etc., which are not too often explored in mainstream literature. This report was reviewed by Professor Radha Krishnan from UC Irvine, as well as Dr. Devika Sethi from IIT Mandi. Then we've also written a policy brief on the BD industry in India, um, our report on the future of sustainable energy in India was reviewed by Nalini Gupta, Managing Editor of Ideas for India. After the COVID second wave and looking at the controversies around vaccines, we also wrote a policy report called Patents, Policy or People of Profits. This was re reviewed by Dr. Arpita Mukherjee from ICRIOR. So my point in telling you all of this is that you are at the lead of picking the topics all the way to the designing of the reports. You can, and you will be involved in all stages of this. Um, we've published more than 20 reports till now, and I've only mentioned a few today. So I'd encourage all of you to look at our website to get an idea on the variety of topics we've covered and the structure we follow and the variety of frameworks we follow to essentially tell you how flexible we are while we're writing our reports and how much scope there is to explore. Next slide, please, Nikunj. Moving on to working papers, we are one of the very few undergraduate societies that take up working papers. Um, we have authored a couple of uh, working papers um, which were also presented uh, at the International Young Research Conclave by uh, SRCA, SW, and Institute for Research and Studies. Um, on the on analyzing consumers' search costs in e-commerce. 
and we will also be taking up multiple working papers this year and next year and like i said um you are at the helm of controlling the topics you choose and um how deep you would go into their research um right so some of you may be aware of this that in order to uh, nikunj could you go to the previous slide please so uh as part of an effort to increase public participation in policy making a lot of ministries and bodies of authority release these drafts and concept notes uh, before the table in parliament and uh, this is something that we actively engage with uh, and this is something that you will also do in your term uh, while analyzing these policies you would gain a better understanding of how to look at uh, how different stakeholders are impacted and obviously provide you to the sense of appreciation of the sense the rigor that goes into designing each individual provision if i please so i'm sure you all have figured out that um research is a very important aspect of our society in fact one of the factors that sets our society apart from other societies is our caliber in research but besides from the research reports and policy briefs we also have lots of endeavors where we engage with um your know, school students and one such endeavor and initiative is let's talk policy which was actually started by our seniors and in their first year they engaged with 1000 plus students um and they just talked about policies in the economic era so we took it a notch further and we actually made uh, a two cd workshop out of it um where we engage with 1000 plus students from 10 schools across 24 sessions um in the first session we actually introduce them to the basics of policy making including policy cycle and when behavioral economic concepts like nudge, nudge theory and in the second we went deep into understanding digital policies of india like pradhan mantri janthan yojana uh, so being a knowledge centric society with so much research and above what are you going to get from this besides writing and authoring all these reports we as the research department policy directors are also going to be conducting research sessions for you um you are free to as juniors <laughs> tell us what you want to learn about but basic economic and finance topics would also be covered um just to give you like an idea of how it went i think the first research session that i attended as a junior was on the topic random and i remember my seniors talking about in so much detail about the logic and fault and probabilities behind randomness that i was so intrigued so um research is going to open up lots of avenues for you right uh with an aim to uh make research more accessible we created resource open house where we basically compile these sort of modules and different themes with which range from uh personal finance and behavioral economics to foreign policy and political structures and each theme covers a number of topics Uh, for example the theme of heterodox economics would cover modern monetary theory chicago and australian schools of thought and so on and what we're trying to do here is build your knowledge uh, from the bottom up where you can make your way from uh, basic videos and podcasts all the way to full fledged research papers next slide please right so while we have concluded this year's edition of the national economic olympiad is something we take great pride in introducing you to And you started off as a small online quiz a few years back, and to say that it's grown exponentially since then would be an understatement. As as the figures on the see uh, on the screen indicate, it's a truly international end up. The latest edition was within seven thousand five hundred participants in ten countries. As students who were in school not so long ago. we realize that economics is a very expansive field and the school curriculum often does not do justice to the subject nio which is not just limited to economics but also incorporates elements of critical thinking and case study is thus geared towards providing a platform to school students to break the monotony of their curriculum and brings in real world application based ideas um on a slightly personal level nio is a very heartwarming memory for us especially now since some of our participants made it to FRCC and have been reaching out to us it's one of our biggest engagements with school children and definitely one with the most positive reception next year it will be you guys who will be driving what touted to be india's largest economic olympiad you'll witness the rush of being covered by more than 20 publications including the likes of india today and times now and in the process of managing this herculean task 
you learn a lot you learn how to manage databases you'll be putting your excel skills to use in real life you'll be curating the questions themselves and on the day of the olympiad you'll probably be answering 10 calls and 15 emails every minute you will be the people who will be who will be carrying this legacy forward i think janvi you can now talk a little about the marketing internship right uh, so as you can see the figures in front of you um you know we had 7500 plus participants from uh, 10 plus countries so organizing an event at such a scale requires a lot of outreach and marketing so for this purpose we had the marketing internship program where we had 120 plus interns we had two batches of marketing interns and um, we mentored them over a week of uh, over a period of four weeks and during those four weeks we had uh, interactive sessions on various um, marketing techniques uh, um photoshop canva excel video editing so now uh, see and we had students uh, from uh, various schools and colleges as well so now uh, you know speak, uh, speaking from my personal experience uh last year when i joined the society i had very little knowledge about these softwares and now almost a year later i conducted sessions on the same so that's how huge the uh, learning curve is and you get to learn a lot of not only theoretical uh, uh you know stuff and you also get to learn a lot of practical things that you can apply not just in your work in the society but um in other areas as well moving on to our very own lecture series discourse and archive of ideas it is a platform geared towards broadening the horizons of discussions on policy matters and contemporary issues so under discourse we host eminent personalities from across domains various domains once every month and in the past we have had the privilege to hold uh, host people like dr indu bhushan who is the ceo of ayushman bharat dr mihir shah who was a, a member of the planning commission of india and is an indian economist Dr. Ritika Khera, Dr. Ramchandra Guha, Mr. Karan Thapar, who is a journalist at the Wire, and uh, we also like you can see on this slide, we hosted a session with Mr. Tim Harford, who is an English economist and the author of the bestseller book The Undercover Economist, and we hosted this session in collaboration with the PPE Society, that's the Politics, Philosophy, and Economics Society of the Oxford University. So the fact that we are able to call in such uh, big speakers for our regular discourse session. Uh, is a testimony to the legacy and the credibility that we have been able to build as a society over the years and when you all come into the society it will be your job to host these people for the discourse sessions you will be reaching out to people uh, you will be reaching out to big corporates people from the government from the academia and calling them for discourse session and as members of the society we also get to interact with these people on a personal level as well apart from the session that we are hosting which is a great experience and if colleges do reopen sometime then we'll be able to call in these speakers on campus for sessions or you know go to their offices to record these sessions uh, which was the format uh, in which discourse first began uh, you all can head on to our uh, youtube channel the economic society srcc to view some of the discourse sessions to get a better idea of it moving to decoded that is our in house podcast series which was instituted 2 years ago So our basic sort of inspiration to launch a podcast was the realization that a lot of people don't really have the opportunity to you know or the time perhaps to indulge in other forms of information dissemination that we undertake at the economic society about which we've already talked about simply put about decoded it is a platform via which we interact with experts in the field on issues of public policy research or uh, contemporary affairs and literally anything under the sun in order to gain newer perspectives and comprehend seemingly complex matters with their simplistic explanations we're currently streaming our third season which involves people from the society that is us interacting with the experts and leaders from academia on topics across development economics fiscal and monetary policies behavioral economics cryptocurrencies etc to name a few In the past, we've had the opportunity to host eminent personalities such as Mr. Virul Shah, Professor Amya Bakshi, Professor Jayati Ghosh, uh, among many others for decoded. And the interaction later is disseminated through our social media handles among the student fraternity at SRCC, of course, Delhi University, 
and beyond uh, you know via me all major audio streaming platforms like spotify apple music etc and as we head on to the next season with you guys that is we give you the opportunity to, to discuss these matters both amongst yourselves as members and with luminaries with from various domains and on a more personal note here i have had the opportunity pleasure of speaking with a lot of these people on an extremely informal level and not just during the course of the recording so to say but even post that learning from them and also exploring the fields of research and policy from an angle that i had probably not in the past and you can also see uh, you know the the quants that are presented on the slides looking at how vast and how uh, uh, and looking at the levels that we reached with respect to decoder uh, yes so hello everyone now let me introduce you to data labs so data labs is the data based research and analytics department of the economic society so as you might know data is the oil of the 21st century most of the key decisions right now happen through data based inferences and that is why we have data labs with us which is prob the only data driven initiative in the um, university and probably in the country where we undergraduate students uh, look into policy and economic affairs through uh, data based research so that is what so uh, we have mainly three projects that happen within data lab that is data report jankari and the data point so nikunj next slide please yes so you might be aware that many Uh, famous organizations like the niti aayog or the united nations etc release various reports indices every year like the hdi report or the corruption index etc even in ecosoc also we are proud because we release two such uh, indices every year so first i would like to talk about the healthcare infrastructure index which is something very close and proud for all of us so healthcare as you might know is one of the most crucial input as far as uh, a developing country like india is concerned however Uh, our hii report is the first report in the whole country to compile the details of infrastructure that is necessary for proper healthcare services in all of indian states and that is something which we are extremely special promo video where professor mehir something which the niti aayog has been contemplating over for so many years and we have done a much better job so that is something which we take immense high pleasure in doing much honor in doing and next year when we do this you will be the guys leading this so this is something which we do by a lot of quality work that goes behind this even including a bit of elementary machine learning and you are leading this project it is something which the college is very proud of uh, society is very proud of something that actually we gives out a very valid outcome into the society uh, with basically because of the reason that this is, we are the first we a group to contemplate on this issue and release such a report for the need of the entire nation and then comes our next indice which is on comprehensive development index so uh, you might be aware of the human development index that the united nations releases so this is a holistic framework which we ourselves have de designed to uh, rank different countries in the world so uh, i wish to say that this is something at par with what united nations does so again this is also something which you can give a hand yourself on because uh, that is the kind of diversity in the activities we do next slide please along with that we also release various data reports as i said again um, dealing with data is something very crucial wherever you go you go to academia you go to the industry you go to the government everywhere data uh, a tinge of knowing something to do with data is very necessary that is why we do data reports which is again again diversity is our key here like you can see one thing which we did about finance the other thing we did was about development then we are doing about land develop land utilization so all these things are very diverse very different so like our land utilization report was a mathematical modeling which we did using python programming and uh, everything was conceptualized ideated initiated and done by the students themselves so this is where the steep learning curve comes i know right out of your school you are right here without even knowing what is statistics like very basic statistics or very basic mathematics you know and from there you are directly coming into knowing about advanced quantitative techniques or advanced numerical methods which 
even most other undergrad students might not even think of. So that is where data lab, we take much privilege in doing such things in the in data labs because you get to know about the theoretical stuff of what a quantitative research is and two, you get to know the tinge of its practical applicability. You know how to do it using a computer programming, see advanced Excel, R programming, Python programming, all these are things which we will learn in the whole process of while dealing with different projects which we have in data labs. Now, Hardik will initiate you into some more projects which we have with us. Uh, right. Uh, before I continue, just let me know if I'm audible or wrong. Yeah, Hardik, you're audible. Great, great. Uh, Nikon, should you please move on to the, move to the previous slide for once? Right, thank you. So one of the data reports which we worked in the previous months was about analyzing the impact of you know, macroeconomic variables like inflation and political stability on the FDI levels of uh, India over a period of 20 years. Now, this project was entirely data driven and we learned a lot while working on it. So for example, we learned about OLS regression in Python, Excel, which from a, uh, you know, being from a BCom honors background, this is something which is not in my curriculum. So that actually highlights the motto of the society, right? You take up challenges, you learn every day, and you make yourself a better individual with every passing day and every passing project. Uh, could you move on to the next slide, please? Right, thank you. So now we move on to Project Jankari, which is the only student-driven primary research initiative in the entire Delhi University. It basically aims at understanding the real life, uh, the real life and on-ground impact of policies, right? Now, this is something which is very close to me because in my junior tenure, I was involved in every team of this project and had the chance of finally completing the project by taking it from my seniors, right? And believe me, this project has given me some of the best first year memories of my college life. Uh, last year, we tried to assess the performance of DTC buses in Delhi. And based on the data that we collected, we suggested policy recommendations to the government of Delhi. Now, the skills you learn through this project is literally immense, right? You learn how to play with data, talk to strangers, generate key insights from that data, and then finally drive an impact in the everyday lives of people. In fact, the topic of the every year's project is given by the junior members only, right? So you actually have an opportunity to learn how to run a project in your very first year. Now, in my opinion, that's super cool and unique. This year too, we have some uh, super exciting projects lined up for you. For example, creation of the first ever education infrastructure index, creating dashboards for other organizations like the one created by Azim Premji Institute, and as mentioned, we give you full autonomy to decide the topics for your projects and you have a ch chance to guide them wherever you want them to go, right? In addition to that, we believe in upskilling our juniors and for that, we plan to organize sessions as well as in the sessions in the field of data analysis, something which we at e Ecosoft take a huge pride in. All in all, we believe in giving you an opportunity in your first year itself so that the next years are only on an uphill trajectory. Uh, moving on. Moving to data point, uh, so being a research-driven society, data collection thus becomes a core area of our operations. Although we undertake other projects like Project Jankari as spoken of earlier, as a part of extending primary research in such volatile times, DataPoint is a survey series aimed towards utilizing micro responses in order to chart macro effects, all right? So uh, under DataPoint, what we essentially do is roll out survey forms over Google Forms that is the most you know, efficient platform to use. Uh, and we collect the responses in order to create uh, pictographs and reports sort of using the behavioral responses of the respondents via data analysis tools in MS Excel, et cetera. So we've conducted six surveys as of yet, hovering around a wide range of study like data privacy, digital education infrastructure, investment literacy, et cetera. So as spoken of earlier, we give you full autonomy to decide what sort of topics you want to go ahead with, which you believe will you know, give us the most um, sort of output uh, in order to gain insights from the data, in order to make it more inferential so that not just us as a society, but layman uh, or you know, common people can also benefit out of the reports. Right, so as you might have figured by now, our society has a decidedly intellectual and inward looking bent. And in some ways, it's exactly this which makes economic societies in general so desirable. Across borders, be it Indian unis or Oxford and so on, if you talk about um, being from the economic society, people will know what you mean. And the idea that's associated with the society will extend to you 
as an individual and work in your favor. Anyways, I digress. Um, the Sri Ram Research Festival was instituted with an aim of adhering to and amplifying the idea that is at the very core of our society's existence, a drive for unique, authentic research. SRRF aimed and succeeded in bringing the ideas of tomorrow to the forefront and bridging the chasm that exists between young, eager minds and experienced professionals by promoting discourse between the two. Given this, the festival had three main elements, speaker sessions, workshops, and competitions. We have had some very notable speakers like Ms. Inga Anderson, who is the Executive Director of the United Nations Environment Program, to distinguish professors from universities like JNU, Columbia, LSE, and so on. Our workshops have aimed to both make information available to others and help them learn new, sk uh, new skills while allowing us to do the same. Lastly, we have our competitions. Research is often met by yawns, but we truly believe that research is for everyone and, we, and can be immensely exciting and enriching. With this thought in mind, we organized the Sri Ram paper competition, which is almost as old as the society itself and is one of the most prestigious paper competitions in the country. Additionally, Taking cognizance of the increasing usefulness of data in rigorizing modern research, something that Hardik and Abhiram have also spoken about at length, we introduced the first edition of the Sri Ram Data Championship, an event that aimed to recognize epiphanies arrived at the intersection of qualitative and quantitative research. As members, you would get to read these papers, interact with the eminent personalities, sit beside your fellow members, forging bonds and discovering the true essence of research. In all of it, if there's one thing that I can promise, it's this. There will never be a dull moment and your mind will be constantly stimulated by everything. Next slide, please. Hi, everyone. So, Tetris Parables is the digital publication of the Economic Society, SRCC. We pride ourselves with the fact that this is a platform that not only encourages economic oriented articles, but also has and addresses ideas like gender rights, geopolitics, interactions in the society, and even abstract ideas about how the world works. Every voice, if you have an idea and you want a platform that will ensure that your idea gets that expression, Ceteris Paribus is for you. And while we take in uh, student submissions, right, and approximately deal with 150 articles, across the board have a yearly reach of 30,000 plus readers, which is a lot for someone just in college 18 to 21 year old and ensuring that your ideas actually create an impact and reach so many people. So while we take in student submissions, we also have a dedicated column for experts speak, which is talking about getting ideas and getting articles about big professors and big economists if you know, uh, we have submissions from Dr. Amit Bhaduri, who is an extremely well-known Indian economist and talks a lot about the problems in neoclassical economics. Along with that, a lot of our eminent professors from Delhi University, from Jawaharlal Nehru University, also provide in monthly and quarterly submissions to our blog. And Professor AGC Bose also talks a lot about uh, labor economics and how it works in the 21st century. So if you go through our website, all of these articles, the, this sort of article writing is something that isn't really taught in school. And which is why we tell you that you don't have to fear about those things. And that economic society will provide you and nurture you to actually learn how to write that, to ideate and articulate your ideas in the best possible manner. Uh, can we move on to the next slide, please? Oh, hi, guys. Thank you, Ananya, for summing that up. But just like about the work that like the editors in chief and the society by extension, uh, you know, undertake, you know, we want you to, as opposed to simply perfecting your grammar, you we want to provide you with a platform where you can think critically and transform your research into comprehensive arguments that, you know, are aimed at effectively, effectively communicating your ideas. So unlike CBSE and say several other boards, 
where being opinionated is discouraged and you're forced to adopt a pros and cons fact reproduction method of writing, we want you to back your opinions and arguments with evidence-based research as opposed to presenting those facts as the main content. And, uh, you know, exactly, we don't expect you to know this from school. Many of us didn't know it from school either. And for one of the things we do to disseminate this information is conduct a writing mentorship program where we're essentially training school students to engage in effective and structured writing that is backed by evidence with the final outcome being an article which is written by these students on various interdisciplinary topics. Like some of these students have written about economics and biological processes and game theory and feminism and capitalism in religion. So you can see that the connections that you're exposed to and you are ideating upon while thinking critically and backing it with evidence and research, research is immense. And we understand that we're also essentially second years. So we do host professors, say from Ashoka University, and also collaborate with several NGOs so that, you know, our impact is at least of some use, considering that we're probably much more privileged than several other organizations. So that way, that's one thing that we really attempt at uh, progressing. Uh, Neeti, you can shift. Right. Yeah. And yeah, now yeah. I'd like to introduce you, uh, introduce you to Artha, which is the annual economics journal of the Shriram College of Commerce. It is also one of the premier economics journals in Delhi University. So we spoke about articles that are published on our digital blog. Take that a notch higher, make it more research oriented. And you have articles that are submitted for Artha. I, I'll talk about this in a very personal way, right? And why I find Artha to be extremely exciting and, and thrilling for me. Imagine that your research, right? Your, you had a research question about how uh, things work in the world, right? And your ideas, your article is published on the same platform as people from World Bank economists from RBI, professors from Oxford, Yale, and whatnot. You think of a big organization, you think of Observer Research Foundation. Any big organization that is today creating an impact is contributing to economic thought, to political thought, a policy-oriented discussion. We have submissions from those people. We've had submissions from people like Ms. Kiran Sumanshi, who's currently the chief manager of ET Times. We've interviewed and published interviews from Mr. Arun Mayra, who was a former member of the Planning Commission. And he's also served as the former e India chairman for the Boston Consultancy Board. And along the entire journey, right, we have junior editorial boards for both the Ceteris Paribus and for Artha. So the entire idea is the more you edit, the more you read articles and get exposed to ideas coming from such big people, right? Imagine you can actually edit and uh, read articles that are coming from such big personalities and we're merely college students. So the entire process is extremely hands-on and it pushes you to think more, to do more, to research more. And I believe that is much more it creates value to us. And again, I think contributing to what everyone has already said, it's another feather in the fact that there's an exponential learning curve being in the economic society. These are just few other names of external contributors that we've had. So the idea, like one thing you'd like to mention about this is that you are a very important part of the team when it comes to reaching out to these experts. So people you'd want to reach out to, for example, I'd want to say reach out to more uh, Indian professors, someone else might want to reach out to people from the World Bank. So your ideas and opinions are valued here. And in the entire creative process of actually refining the journal, what sort of arguments you want to bring about, on what topics, or do you want debates in the journal? Do you want two people talking about the same thing from opposing sides? All of that is like very integral to our journal and you're an important part of ideating upon it. So that way also like it's a really huge learning curve. We also have our own uh, bi-weekly newsletter that we send out on alternate Sundays. And our newsletter isn't uh, 
framed in the typical format uh, wherein we cover all the recent happenings but uh, we choose one topic and provide a deep understanding about it uh, to our subscribers via podcasts articles youtube videos etc so if you're a part of the newsletter team when you come into the society and get to work on the newsletter it's immensely enriching because before you decide upon one topic and curate content for your uh, for our subscribers you will have to go over all the recent happenings and then choose one and gain a deeper understanding about that particular topic so that you know you'll be able to compile the best resources available on that particular topic so in this way you see you develop a sense of awareness about what's happening around you and something as simple as uh, curating a newsletter uh, every alternate sunday will help you go a long way in you know being aware of the happenings in the world right so to foster the spirit of research among the student body by incentivizing them to not only invest their time but also their effort into the pursuit of knowledge last year we introduced dr jagdish bhaguti research scholarship in terms of monetary award this would be the largest scholarship offered in srcc alongside many prestigious others the scholarship would have the potential to propel students to take up research driven endeavors and help them convert their ideas into tangible results and emerge as the economic gurus of tomorrow we're proud to be associated with professor bhagwati his journey from delhi school of economics to teaching at columbia university is a story that truly exemplifies the ideals of passionate learning and dedication to one subject to be a part of an initiative that is this impactful and motivating it would be truly an honor for any srcc student to strive towards and be awarded with a scholarship that carries his name next slide hi uh, so coming to social media uh, so i think one misconception everyone has is that social media is just about making creatives or writing captions but i really believe that there's so much potential when you're working in this department because you know whatever any department does here in ecosoc has to be has to reach the audience that's the only way that we can create impact and that's going to happen through social media especially with online college so i mean i really hope that you take this in a more positive way and you actually realize what all you can do in this department so you, we also teach you a lot of softwares that we use say photoshop canva you have video making um softwares and so this is something that you know i didn't know how to use any of these things till i think jan beginning of jan and today we use this every single day and i think that shows how much ecosoc has to offer when it comes to these um these things and also i think one um great way to learn here like it helps you become helps you um sort of hone your soft skills because you have to communicate with so many people firstly reaching the audience in a way that actually resonates with them and actually being able to put it in a way that they want to read what you're writing moreover because you're um you're dealing with so many people you're coordinating with so many departments again your communication skills really really uh, improve so these are a lot of ways that you can learn plus looking at the stats on the screen i don't think i need to reiterate how much of an impact this has uh we've had i think an increase of more than 700 followers on instagram in the last few months we the only uh, society which has a verified twitter account so blue tick and even the campaigns that we undertake you, in the process of actually um, making those you learn so much because say it's bite size economics so we talk about economic concepts and we try to concise it on in like three four slides so you you learning how to how i mean you research a lot you learn how to shorten it and put it forth and see this sketchy affair something new that we started so the sketchy affair actually deals with current affairs and they try to put it for, uh, put it forward in a comical way and uh, you present it as a satire and again that that too i think is something very cool that the society is undertaken so yeah that's about it with engagement 
Hi. Uh, so when we talk about the economic society, the image that it creates is that the entire work is very academic in nature and someone might have to give up on the corporate exposure. But I personally can assure you that in SRCC, there is no better place to be at than the economic society if corporate exposure is what you're looking for. We have partnerships with various organizations, including the World Bank and Crystal. And we have new partners coming in every year. This year in the research festival, we, have, we had IBM. And when you talk to the stakeholders from these organizations, you develop a sense of uh, confidence. You are negotiating with one of, uh, with senior professionals, with some of the best minds of the country while still being a college student. You are drafting proposals, you are designing marketing plans, and you develop an approach to create benefit, not only for your own organization, but also to a third party. And you develop the skill to sell something. Uh, for events, you are looking for sponsors, you have to convince them that your organization can provide them what they need, uh, what they want. And in the process, the skills that you develop uh, will stay with you throughout your life. Uh, next slide, please. Now, when we organize events of such large scale, it is imperative that we get the relevant attention. It is not just enough to get the partners, to get the speakers. We also have to get the audience. And that is where the media coverage comes in. If I had to give you a bird's eye view, uh, NEO SRCC, uh, National Economics Olympiad, was probably the most widely covered event across India, uh, organized by any student run organizations. We had 50 plus articles. SRES was covered by India Today Live. So that gives you a sense of the kind of acti activities we undertake and the kind of attention we get. So uh, it gives a sense of validation and extreme accomplishment to you when you see uh, an article posted online about something that you are doing and the network you develop go, stays with you. Like I probably can call up someone from the editorial team of any big newspaper you name in any major city you name right now. And that is the type of network that you develop here at the Com Society. Next slide, please. Uh, we now have uh, some of our seniors who will be sharing their experiences and their memories uh, at the Economic Society so that uh, all of you are better, uh, better able to gauge uh, what the work is and at the end of two years, uh, at what place the society leaves you. Hi and welcome to SRCC. I'm incredibly excited to talk to all of you because it was the economic society that defined my steep learning curve that the college has to offer. How? For example, we started Data Lab, a truly unique initiative, and one of our projects was praised by a member of the planning commission to be work done better than the Niti Aayog. We were also able to create learning opportunities directly with luminaries such as the governors of RBI, global heads of institutions such as Deloitte, Bank of America, the World Bank, and so many others. Now, all of this, however, is impact on the world, right? It's impact on others. What the economic society does to you as an individual is that it forces you to think big. It compels you to do so because it's only when you dream big that you achieve big. And that's why if you want to join the economic society, don't do it just for everything that we already do. Do it for the limitless potential that lies ahead. All the best. Uh, hello everybody, so the thing which differentiates the economic society from all other societies of the college is the fact that we have a quote-unquote wingless structure. Now, what this essentially means is that our junior members are not restricted to a particular department or project for the entirety of the year, rather they actively volunteer for the activities as and when they come on a regular basis. So to put it in simple words, what this essentially means is that uh, in ECOSOC, you would be making the decision as to what you want to learn and extract from the society rather than the society or the senior members of the society making that decision for you. And that is the basic reason why you will be able to get the most holistic learning experience by joining the society. So yeah, that is it from my side. All the best for the recruitment process and bye-bye. 
someone closely associated with the society for three years, a retrospection really puts things into perspective, right? Pulled this hoodie out for old time's sake. And throughout this time, uh, the small things that you do end up being a part of the exponential growth curve that uh, the economic society has been on. Similarly, I've been a part of uh, growth in a lot of other things that the economic society has to offer, uh, like the Shiram Economic Summit, the Research Festival, Artha, just to name a few. See, the opportunities are, of course, are plenty, right? And uh, some growth, of course, uh, I cannot and do not want to quantify. Uh, like the variety of initiatives that we have been taking, the newer techniques, the newer channels, the deeper research. Uh, everything is constantly reinvented and boundaries are pushed. Uh, I think at the risk of sounding very cheesy, growth is an everyday affair at the economic society. As far as individual development goes, I have a lot to thank for, of course. Uh, had a great set of people to work with, had a great set of juniors uh, for most parts, and uh, dabbled in a lot of things I never thought I would do. Uh, I never thought I would be the academician writing research papers or the graphic designer spreading out posters on the dime. But why? I was wrong. I mean, I, I did all of that, right? So there's a lot to do and there's a lot to learn uh, if you want to. That's the good part, the blank slate, right? And I hope you guys uh, embrace the legacy that we uphold and uh, I hope to see you guys on the other side. Well, researching at Ecosoc was a wonderful experience given its existing reputation as a student-run think tank, lots of distinguished economists and academicians provided us with their valuable guidance and reviews. And believe me, when they appreciate your work, it gives you a lot of satisfaction and a sense of accomplishment. Overall, Ecosoc has helped me develop a predilection for economic research and the overall experience at Ecosoc has been really enriching. So over the years, we've tried to function as an independent think tank. Personally, for me, it's not just the discussions that we have with guest speakers that we invite or the big organizations that we collaborate with, but the discussions that we have amongst ourselves, just candid Socratic discussions that you know give us the opportunity to get that nuanced perspective. I'm sure you would have heard the phrase one of a kind initiative being associated with Data Lab on numerous accounts. But what exactly makes Data Lab so unique? So, the first point would be the kind of processes that we follow to achieve the results that we want. For example, for one of our projects, Project Jankari, you guys would be required to go on ground and physically interact with the sources of data. This is very similar to proper academic research. Uh, an opportunity which people tend to typically engage in quite a few years down the line and you will get to engage in this in the very first year of your undergraduate degree. Uh, coming to my second point, the second point is basically the kind of impact that we're able to create through our projects. Whenever we pick a certain project, we try to ensure that there are certain actionable elements associated with it and we want to bring about a tangible impact through those actionable elements. And we endeavor to continue to do the same for all of our other upcoming as well as our past projects. So here it goes. Uh, by being in Ecosoc, you'll uh, get all the corporate exposure you want. You learn the art of uh, conversation with the partnership heads of big corporates, banks, uh, criminals, oh sorry, politicians and uh, think tanks, etc. Now this can be over mails, calls, texts such as LinkedIn or WhatsApp and uh, ultimately you will know how to balance your tone of formal and informal in any pitch. Uh, Ecosoc taught me how to think creatively, how to look at the seemingly mundane things and apply a different perspective. If you look at the publications of Artha or Cetris Parables, you'll realize that most of these articles require you to play with economic concepts, to um, apply a different lens and to weave a compelling story. I also learned how to edit and write research papers and I was exposed to a lot of advanced economic concepts. I think lastly and most importantly, I've met some of the most fun and kind people through Ecosoc and most of my friendships in college share a common link and that common link is Ecosoc. I think Nikunj, you can share the presentation again. So um, now and move on to the next slides of the presentation.
Right. So I think this is probably the most awaited slide. And I'll just run you over the timeline that we'll be following. The first step would be a recruitment form that would be released almost as soon as we are done with the orientation. It will be a simple form with around three subjective questions. And you'll have to turn the, these forms in before 4 December end of day. One small tip here, I would strongly, strongly recommend that you don't wait till the last moment to fill the form, since in the coming days, you'll only be inundated with forms from other societies too. Again, one very important thing to note here, these forms are not eliminative, but they are evaluative in nature. What this means is that everyone who submits the completed form will be invited for the group discussion round. However, do not take this as permission to be flippant about your form responses, as you need to understand that your responses would help us understand your inclinations and interests better. Moving on, the next part of the process would be a group discussion round. The, this round will be eliminative in nature. To preempt some of the questions that you might have, no preparation per se would be required for this round. We'll be giving you topics in groups of six to eight, and you would be expected to discuss them. These, these topics won't be too technical, so there are no prerequisites that are required necessarily. This round is just meant to allow us to gauge how you think and how you work in the team. Also, on grounds of inclusivity, we'll allow people to appear for GDs in other languages, um, and the preferences for, for the same can be found in our recruitment form. Now, moving on, once we are done with the GDs, we'll be releasing a shortlist. All the, short, uh, all the shortlisted candidates would be given a very exciting research task. The task would be curated in such a manner that it would be unique to each and every one of you. A disclaimer here, it won't be a copy-paste assignment. The task will seek to gauge your uniqueness, creativity, intent, and willingness to learn. You will be given more than sufficient time for the same as is visible on the screen. Again, this would be an evaluative, but a non-eliminative stage in the sense that every candidate who submits a bona fide completed task would be eligible for the in-person interview. Lastly, we will be having personal interviews. Um, this may sound a little daunting to you guys as of now, but please rest, rest assured that it would be a free-flowing discussion wherein we would be prioritizing potential and interest over the presence of technical knowledge. The personal interviews would start only in January, seeing as how most of you have your CA Foundation exams and also our academic calendar. To ensure that you do not miss out on any updates and are apprised of all developments during the recruitment process, I would advise you to follow all our social media handles, including Instagram. Uh, Shishti, over to you now. Right. So we had uh, two common questions uh, asked in the form that we rolled out before. One, that uh, are BCom Honors students eligible to apply? Yes. The, co uh, the society is open to both BCom Honors and Economic Honors students. Second, is there anything particular we're looking in terms of skill sets? Uh, there's no particular requirement for you guys to apply to the society. Just possess the drive to tackle new challenges with a good amount of enthusiasm and resilience. Have good interpersonal skills and just be willing to collaborate and share knowledge with your team members uh, and us as well. So I think that's uh, all that I had. Uh, we can begin with the questions that we can take from the chat box now. Right, so um, you guys can drop in your questions in the chat box and we'll be taking them one by one. If you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, you can also raise your hand and we'll give you the permissions. So I'll be starting with, uh, also please use the Q&A box to drop in your questions. Right, so we have a question here. Also, just to reiterate, all students, both BCom honors and economic honors are eligible for the society. So I think that's a common question that all of you have asked and you have um, emphasized again and again that being from BCom honors is not something that would impact your application in any form. So, um, right. Um, I'll just be, if some... I request all of you to please put your questions in the chat, in the Q&A box as opposed to the chat box so that we can answer them properly. 
how do you apply and get selected to the economic society i think that's a question we've already taken up and we have explained the recruitment process so you'll be following the process that we just laid out and um that would be it about the workload that anmol bhagat asks what's the workload like so economic society is a society that that is demanding in a lot of ways right so you will be devoting some of your times to research papers and so on and so forth but it also gives you a lot and i think one of the best things about the society is that it's flexible so you get to work in your own time and you get to collaborate with others and figure out what works for you so we won't be uh, seniors imposing deadlines on you or anything of that sort right you guys will be the ones taking the initiative and you guys will be the ones who will be collaborating among amongst yourselves and working at a flexible yet efficient pace um there's a question from karan saying that says is getting into ecosoc very difficult um i would have to deny it's not very difficult getting into the society i think all you need to worry about at this point is your own application and all we look for is a willingness to learn a curiosity to explore and a passion for economics and if these are things that you possess then there is really nothing that you have to worry about Ayush asks if I can join the society with any other society as well. Again, that's something that's a very subjective question and would um, differ from person to person. Uh, you can manage the society with other societies, um, and that honestly just depends on your time management skills and so on and so forth. Shishti asks if you need to be a pro in economics to join the societies. Ah, uh, to join the society, are learners and aspirants welcome? Yes, Shishti. Ah, uh, you do not have to be a pro. So, one thing that I want all of you to understand right now is that we realize that you've just ah uh, come into college, right? If you were economists already, or if you were like A grade researchers, you wouldn't be applying to the economic society. So we understand where you stand. We understand that um the knowledge that you have learned in school is very restrictive in a lot of ways. So we are here to help you learn. We are here to learn together. So just we, as I said, we prioritize potential. potential and creativity over existing knowledge um right someone asked if the pi would be eliminated yes the pi would be eliminated and once we release the personal interview shortlist we'll be having a chat with all of you it wouldn't be an interview where we grill you or whatever so don't worry about that and after the pi we'll have the final list of candidates who would be taken in um i think shrishti if i've missed any questions you could probably pitch in and yeah, uh, no, answer um, those questions Yeah, so there's someone asking if we didn't study uh, economics in eleventh and twelfth, would we be able to apply? Yes, we'll be able to apply. Like I said before, um, having or pursuing economics in your school or right now in college does not matter. Um, how many students will be selected? That is again not a fixed number. If we have a good amount of applicants, we'll be willing to, of course, uh, recruit more people, provided that they show the passion and the interest in the society that we want. Um, will the topics? Hey, there's a question. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll just take this one. So there's a question saying, will the GD topics be related to economics? No, it won't be. The GD topics would largely be abstract. And again, to re-emphasize, we are not here to test your existing economics knowledge, and the GDs are not meant to be a test of remembrance or anything of that sort. So the topics would just see how you can think on your feet, and we just want to see um your opinions and how you kind of um kind of talk about those so that's it about gds and um right all right shishti i think you can take the next questions i don't see new ones right now right so uh someone asks will the topic be related to economics um even in your gds or research task for that matter the topic would not be purely economical or very academic, uh, academic in that sense it will be very unique to you it will be very uh, concept driven very practical in nature so you won't be tested on your economics acumen per se 
uh, someone asks um, how long before they would know the GD topics and if you need to prepare for GD. So I'll be just clubbing all of these questions and answering them in one go. A, the topic for the group discussion would be released on the spot. Again, GDs will push you to think on your feed. And in that sense, we'll be able to see how you kind of, we'll be able to um, kind of get your authentic opinions. Uh, with respect to preparation, again, there's no preparation required. As cliche as it sounds, just be yourself, be confident with your thoughts, and don't be too domineering because G's are, or GDs are also meant to test how you operate in a team. So I think in GDs, we'll be looking at how you work with the other members in your team, how you build on their arguments instead of just taking the front seat all the time. So um, that's about GDs. There are a lot of questions about the research task. Uh, since the research task will be released after the shortlist, we cannot really give away what the task would be. But if there's one thing I can tell you, the research task would be very innovative. It's not something that you could just Wikipedia or like Google and be done with it. It's something that would really require you to use your critical thinking skills and your creativity. And the best element of the task is that it would be something unique to each and every one of you. And it would be something that you could curate to suit your personality and your individuality. Again, talking about recruitment forms, all recruitment forms would be released over WhatsApp groups shortly. We'll also email you the um, what, uh, the recruitment forms um, tomorrow so stay tuned for that there are questions about uh, the schedule the schedule is tentative in nature will be definitely accommodative of your requirements because we are aware that there are examinations of um, ca students in december so we'll be accommodative in terms of if you are not available on a particular date, we'll try to give you a slot that you uh, prefer. Right. So I think uh, that's it with respect to the questions. Nikunj, if you could move to the next slide. Um, I understand that a lot of you might still have questions. So if you do have any further questions, you can just take a screenshot of this slide and you can reach out to any one of us. Um, other than the numbers given here, you are welcome to contact each and every one of us. We shall remain available for your questions throughout the process, not just as the seniors of the economic societies, but also just as seniors. So you can text, uh, you can uh, dro um, drop us a DM over Instagram or Twitter, or you can just reach out to the numbers mentioned on screen, or you can write to us and we'll be taking all of your questions. But in the interest of time, we'll have to wrap up the orientation now. So that's it, guys. That's it for today. I hope you learned a little more about Ecosoft. We'll be rolling out the recruitment forms shortly, so stay tuned for that.